Yo, it's Guido coming at you with the Tactics Talk, guys. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. We've got the Chief. He's back. The Chief, 1893 from Valhalla, Clan Valhalla. He is in his Bat Chat 12T Tier 8 French Light Tank, and he is bottom tier in a Tier 10 battle. We have loaded in here to Highway, and he is off to the races. His question to me was, how could I do more damage? My answer to you, Chief, is it was going to be hard. <laughs> That's it. Video's over. It was going to be hard. But let's talk about a couple options here. He's going to do some passive work with his scout. The question on that is, when do I switch from passive to shooting or, or active or a combo of active and shooting? And then how do I move from situation to situation in a scout in order to maximize my damage and maximize my my assist? That's that's really the big question. And it's fine to have a two or 3,000 assist game in a situation like this as a bottom tier in three, four, or 500 damage. That's that's actually a really good game for a tier eight light tank. But we can maximize the damage by being a little bit more aggressive and searching for some shots and moving a little bit faster to the next thing. So let's watch this because I think there's probably gonna be some different opinions on this as we get down. He's gonna go for what is a pretty standard bush. I don't use this one very much. I see it used a lot. I may change my mind, we'll see. But he gets down here. The problem for me with this particular bush is it is aggressive. Now, you do have a, a wheeled tank. We're going to see if he actually gets up. Or, okay, so he doesn't really get line of sight on the chief. So the chief, Oh, maybe he does. There he goes. But he doesn't see him because they, they're just not very good at seeing these light tanks. Right? they got to get close. It's the speed and the proximity that makes them good spotters, not necessarily the distance they can spot. And who knows what that guy's crew was like. I don't know if that bush actually gave him cover. Potentially, that's actually a bush that works. It's hard to tell with those little thin ones. But for whatever reason, the chief is able to get up here. My point with that, though, is say it was a EBR 105 or maybe the 13105 or something with better spotting. He may have got spotted. That's why this bush is a high risk, <clears throat> high risk, higher reward kind of bush. All right. So the chief gets into the bush. He's got a couple guys going up to his right, the, the Pantera. The T100 is raging around there. The T62 is sitting back in a bush, and he's got a bunch of Campo Lampa Ding Dongs back in the back. All right, Not really a great scenario, and had the enemy team pushed down to the A1 area, this could have been very much a different game. But let's watch what happens. I think the Chief does a nice job here. He's got guys spotted, right? There's a Progetto. There's my first spotting, 144. Actually, somebody else saw the Progetto. That's pretty funny. And the Lynx has entered the game here he comes and i'd have been very very worried right here i would have zoomed out and went what is his relative distance to me as opposed to zooming in like that and looking at that guy because i'd be very interested to know if this guy was going to get close enough and i may have to start shooting all right so anyway i just started blasting that's what you might have to do with this guy and when you do that you're gonna to have to cut right and head down under this and hide down here to get away from these guys but what happens is he just turns away in time right I think I would have zoomed out, like I said, just to make sure. Now the question, as a passive scout in a situation like this, target-rich environment, lots of guys getting shot. For the moment, you're in good shape. I would be very, I would be very careful to watch that lynx. I don't want him to get close, but there he goes. He got hammered pretty bad. And your EBR kind of cut him off, which helped out quite a bit. I think had your EBR not been here, he may have YOLO'd down into the middle and maybe even got close enough to light you. So those are all things you got to watch out for. Good news is didn't happen, right? Didn't happen on this game and we're continuing to get spots. The other scouts are close enough to EBR and such. We're not really getting a lot of spotting damage for the moment. We're only at, well, 602. We just got a bunch. Here comes a 13105. Again, the thought in my mind of, all right, when do I start shooting? I don't think it's quite yet, but the things to start thinking about here, Chief, is when can I get rid of guys? Isn't that a beautiful thing? An angel just got its wings right there. There goes a wheeled tank, and the EBR, or the, sorry, uh, AMX gets hammered, gets tracked. Again, going into the discussion, do I start firing? I might have right there, just <clears throat> to get rid of that scalp. Now, what I haven't talked about here is using this bush. It is decently wide. There's a possibility that you could back out of it, make it go dark, and still have all the angles covered. It's going to be a little bit difficult, because this guy's at, over here, this guy's over here, and you don't know if maybe there's someone a little further left. So if you go too far backwards, someone's going to definitely have line of sight on you. But I think you could have backed almost straight away and planked a couple shots into that 13105 and ended him. 
That's where I'm talking about, well, it wouldn't be easy, Chief, to get extra damage, but you could work mm -hmm. within this push a little bit and attempt to see if you can't make it go dark 15 meters or what, yeah, 15 meters I think it is, and start getting some shots, sneaking some shots in there. I don't think it hurts anything by, by uh, looking into it, right? Just back out a little bit and go, how far back do I have to be before this thing goes dark? Don't immediately go backing all the way back into the riverbed here and then give all kinds of people line of sight, but just take a quick back up and go, ah, okay, can I make it dark? The other thing to watch out for on that though is sometimes you'll back up, the line of sight to this guy will be dark, but the line of sight to this guy will not be dark. So that is something to watch out for with these singular bushes and, and the different angles that you're dealing with. So that's where, Chief, you could find some extra damage. But the good news is he's tracked and people are absolutely hammering him. Right? And it looks like you're just going, all right, I'll just let him die. There you go. 1,613 assist. There's still a lot of guys up here, auto loaders, the Carnarvon AX. Nice hold down tank. Here's the 13. There we go. The other scout's dead. Very good. That's something that immediately went into my mind when I saw that. I went, wait a minute. Oh, all the scouts are dead. That means I am the king of vision on this map now. One of them, anyway, on my team. So we're just going to go ahead and hang out here for a second. And we type in, good job. All right. I talk about this every now and again because I see people do it. it don't do that. It, it doesn't matter, and it's, it kind of wastes time, to be quite honest. I mean, it's a cool thing to do from a, from a sportsmanship standpoint, and there wasn't much going on. But just that little time, you weren't moving in the battle. You weren't going to the next place. You weren't thinking about the next damage. You were thinking about, let me go hit enter, and then I got to go to chat, and I'll type good job. Oops, I made a typo. Let me back. Okay, and then, then I hit enter. Okay, dude, it's a small thing. I got it, and whatever. If people want to be good sportsmen and do cool things like that, I, I got it. But if you're talking about how do I maximize what I'm doing right now, that's basically the last thing on the priority list, right? That's the last checklist item. You, you still have about 75, 80% of the checklist to get through before you go to the last one. And that's kind of the last checklist item. It, again, it's a small thing. I don't want to make a mountain out of a molehill. But if we're talking about a, a good game like you're having and how do I maximize it, those are the little things. I like that you moved on, but I think I would have gone up instead of coming around through the bottom. Who cares what's over here right now? You find the Scorpion G, that's fine. He's out of the game. These guys over here... These are the guys you want to deal with. I'd have come right up the road and started moving my way into these buildings up here. What I mean by that are these buildings right here. And start looking for damage to get into the, with these guys. Your whole team's pushing into it. Add your gun. That little autoloader gun, the little tiny tank. Get up in there and get yourself some hit points off the Progetto, the 40T, and the other Progetto. Those are all soft tanks. Maybe the Scorpion moves across, but for the moment, he's a clown. He's completely out of the game. Why even bring him into the game? Now, the good news is you get him spotted, and I think somebody actually pretty immediately hits him. Yeah, so they start doing damage to him. You're winning. You're having a good game. You're doing a good job. Unfortunately, the city's not doing fantastic, and now you're moving across the bottom of the map here. Get the cursor going. You're moving across the bottom of the map where guys up here may have shots into you as opposed to cleaning this up. Clean this up. Then worry about this. You're opening a new front. You're kind of like Germany at this point. You're opening a second or third front before you're done with the one you needed to finish. And that's one of the big things right there. When you have a bunch of buddies shooting at people, that's when you want to get your light tank in amongst the other tanks, the enemy tanks, and start shooting because they have less opportunity to shoot you. There's so many guys around, so many guns, you have an opportunity to pop out and do all kinds of damage. So we're going to kind of crawl up here and we're like, okay, we're going to spot. Holy cow. And we get lit, and we're on this backside, and there's guys up behind me. Oh, geez. I'm so glad, and I think you are too, that nobody was really paying attention to this. And guess what? They just might be. If they're paying attention to the map, they know that there's a big push going on. There may already be guys coming down the hill, at which point you're going to get shredded because you're ex completely exposed on this hill right here. And I think you know, but you can actually go up through this valley right here and come up top. So that was another option. If you wanted to move around the bottom, just go up the valley, come up top over there. You're protected from the guy shooting you from the other direction. So this is, again, how did I get more damage? Well, it ain't going to be easy, but you really didn't put yourself in a position to do so. Then we really futz around right here. There's a Scorpion G and some Artie, and it looks like the rest of everybody is back in the town. If I'm going to come up on this ridge and get exposed, I want to get something out of it because I'm really worried about something like this guy right here. Can we see any of them? doesn't look like we have any shots. Also, you did not investigate that. That was another possibility. You could have driven across and ignored all those guys 
and went up behind these dudes and looked for hit points because it looks like these guys have it sorted out. Now that they press in and they've got the, the bad guys looking around, go. Go. I just go at the scorpion juice. So what if he hits me once? It doesn't matter at this point. Get our hit points. There we go. So we finally get there. But just think of the extra seconds it kind of took to do that. And it doesn't... We missed that shot. We get this one. It does matter because it all snowballs. Every little extra second. Typing good job. Taking a little longer to get in there. Taking that long route around the edge instead of going up to where the hit points. Every Everything like that gets us to a later reload, gets us to a later second shot. And then lastly here, Chief, you killed everything up here. No sense capping. As soon as everything died or you knew they were going to run over the arty and you weren't going to get a shot because you were on a reload, I'd have been already down this road and across this bridge and headed up there. I don't think you would have had time to get there based on the timing because there goes the A phase one. But the point is not necessarily that you would have made it in this game. The point is you made the decision earlier and you were already on the way. And if for some reason... The 5120 lives. I think he actually gets obliterated. Yeah, he gets hammered by the FE. Looks like he got death star. <laughs> he took a death star hit. Look at those. And those guys got shots. They're all set up back here getting shots at this guy. And down he goes. So I think you probably would have only been maybe, I don't know, 50 meters from the AMX. Who knows? Maybe you'd have got a shot down the road. I don't know. But the point is you asked the question, how, do I, how was I going to do a little bit more damage here? It's all quick decision making, moving on to the next thing. That's going to take a, a good game like this and turn it into a great game. And that's really where you're trying to get in World of Tanks, especially on what is basically a Rompel Stomp. All right, it didn't look like that for a while, but once the collapse happened, it happened pretty quickly. And that's where you ratchet up the aggressiveness in your scout play to start gobbling up more and more hit points. It's a fine line. It's easy to overextend. In this one, you could have come screaming up. Once I talked about it, you could have come screaming up in these buildings get overexposed and shredded by a bunch of autoloaders, which probably would have then opened it up for the rest of your guys to jump all over them quicker. But it's the fine line between over overextending and pushing in. And I think there was a little room here, if you're honestly saying, how could I got to get a few more da points of damage out of this? There was a little bit more room here to be a little bit more aggressive. Danger, danger. Be careful, right? Because we can easily overextend. But it's a good game, man. Nicely done. We got 2,230 assists. 395 damage. We're a bottom tier scout and we facilitated doing a bunch of hit points out there. In fact, we facilitated 2.5 times our own hit points. That That's a good game. That's a good game. Thanks, man. Thanks for sending that in. I think it's a great discussion. People are going to have different opinions on this, so I'm looking forward to what, what everybody talks about down in the comments. That's all I've got for today. We will see you.